So it gives you a little sense of what they're thinking up here. That's where they're coming at. It would also, and I know I got some building trades people here, it would also wipe out Davis Bacon in building and repairing any post office in the country. Davis Bacon would be wiped out. They would bring in people at lower than community wages to do that type of work. No way! So when we talk about creating jobs, they talk about creating jobs, they're wiping out 120,000 jobs of postal employees. No way! Now, I want to talk about my bill, and Mike Capuano already mentioned it. We have, it's actually 217, we had a, a Steny Hoyer, who, because he's a, a major, minority whip, doesn't usually sign on to bills. That's not, he usually tries to, uh, he goes into negotiations, he tries not to sign on to bills. I don't think he's signed on, you know, I can count on one hand the bills that he signed on to. He signed on to this bill this morning. So we have 217 co-sponsors. We of that 217, we got 25 Republicans who, you know, I'm sort of considered a moderate in Congress. I try to work across the aisle. I think that's what the American people want. This is what my bill does. Right now, the Postal Service is owed, you are owed, uh, about $7 billion because an overpayment that you all made to the Federal Employee Retirement System. We've had two studies. When I was the chairman, I asked to have two studies done, independent surveys. We also had the uh, Government Accounting Office and the Congressional Budget Office look at this. I just wanted to have our facts right. They came back and said, Yes, Congressman, the United States Postal Service, through its customers and through its employees, have overpaid into the federal, em federal employee retirement system about $7 billion, $6.9 billion. So what my bill would do is allow the government to pay that back, okay, to the Postal Service, but it would require them, it would require the Postal Service to offer because they, they are trying to reduce the number of people at the post office, to offer a early retirement cent incentive to workers who are eligible to retire or are approaching their retirement age. Give them years and, and give them an early retirement. So a word to the wise is, don't retire yet. Okay? I don't want anybody coming up at the end and saying, you didn't tell me. A word to the wise. Also, in the CSRS, and a lot of letters here, the Civil Service Reti Retirement System, there's an overpayment there as well. We're not sure how much it is, but it's between $50 billion and $70 billion. What this bill would do is ask the government over time to repay that as well. This would allow us, this would turn the post office into, into a very profitable operation going forward. It, would, it wouldn't fix all the problems, but it would give us time. It would give us months and years to turn this around. Look, we have to make some changes in the post office, there's no doubt about that. But, but. We don't have to make changes that threaten people's livelihoods or cut their pay or slash their jobs. We can make these changes and adjustments and still live up to our promises to the Postal Union. So look, there will have to be changes at some point. Look. It, some towns that have six post offices are going to have to get along with five. And if you multiply that around the country, that's a lot of post offices. Some cities that have 100 post offices are going to have to have 90. And we're going to have to figure out how that works. But we can do this. We can do this. We can win this fight. We don't have to have the bill that they're suggesting. 
No way! We can use common sense. We can treat our, our retirees with, with respect and dignity. We can treat all the postal workers out here today with the dignity that they've earned. So I know there are a lot of postal workers who didn't come here today. And so we need to get them on board. So when you go back to work, whether you're, whether you're throwing mail or you're carrying it or you're, you're a mail handler or a supervisor, you need to go back to work. When you go back to work, if, if it's a senior uh, postal employee, tell them. Tell them what I told you today. It's reverse seniority. The job they save may be their own. Yeah. We gotta get everybody on this fight. If it's a newer employee, explain to them that their hope of having a pension at the end of their working lives depends on this fight that we're fighting right now. They've got to get in the fight. Yeah. Explain yeah. that to them. So right now, it's boiled down to this. There are eight, eight people around a table that are trying to hammer out a deal right now. There are four from the House. There are four from the Senate. There are four Democrats. There are four Republicans. I'm, a, I'm on that committee. I'm, a, I'm one vote. But I have to tell you, Scott Brown, Senator Scott Brown, is also on that committee. Now wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just talked about trying to work on the other side of the aisle. Look, look, they're in, they're in session today. The House is not in session, but the Senate is, so that's where he is. But when we had the meeting the other day, and everybody had to stand where they stand up and take their position on this, he did the right thing. He voted right down the line with the Democrats on that committee. Yeah. I'm a Democrat, he's a Republican. We might have some differences on other issues. But on this issue, on your issue, he's in the right place. And you need to know that. I believe the American labor movement has to make a stand. Yeah. And it might as well be right here and it might as well be right now. Yeah. Yeah. And the day is coming, it's coming soon, when we're going to have to take this fight to Washington. Yeah. Tea Party did. They took their fight to Washington, and now half the people there are scared to death of them. We need to make the same type of effort uh, within the Postal Service, within the labor community, within middle class America. There's nobody out there today that represents the grit and determination of the middle class in the United States more than you do. More than veterans are out there? Raise your hand. How many have a veteran in their family? Raise your hand. I mean, come on. This is the group that fights America's wars. You are a shining example of what's best about America. You're America's backbone. I want to tell you, I got elected on September 11th back in 2001. 
And when I went to Congress, they had to delay my swearing in because there was anthrax in a bunch of the buildings down there, uh, the, the Longworth building, the Capitol, and also in the Brentwood Mail Facility down in D.C. We had two of our clerks that died of inhalation anthrax, Amer members of the American Postal Workers Union. Now, bear in mind, I got two sisters who at that time had young kids, young kids at home. And so, because of the anthrax in the, it was going through the mails, your leadership, the postal unions, had to make a decision. And I was right in the middle of this. They were worried about you as workers, as supervisors and, and as letter carriers, as clerks and mail handlers, they were worried that even though people were taking that SIP roll, they were worried about people bringing anthrax home inadvertently on their clothes and then infecting their kids. So your union leadership had to make a decision. Remember, this is right after 9-11. And if the mail didn't get delivered, there was a real fear that it would, it would tank the economy. And this is, remember when they were saying, get out there, we, we got to make sure the economy doesn't go down. The stock market had already crashed. And they thought if the mail did not go through to 150 million homes and businesses every day, it would, it would put a shock on the economy. So your leadership and you, just union stewards, made a decision. You said, we're going to go to work. We're going to make sure the mail gets through. You did the right thing. You did the right thing, not the easy thing. Not the easy thing, you did the right thing. And you deserve, you deserve better than what, what's going on right now. Yeah. People, people ought to remember when push came to shove, the American postal workers were there. They did their job. They showed up. We need to remind them of that every day. This is a point in time where we have to take our government back. We got to take our government back. I want to thank you for all your support. I want to thank your leadership. They've been terrific. God bless the workers at the United States Postal Service. God bless you all. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Said earlier, our congressman, Labor's congressman. Let's hear it for Stephen Lynch.